Great to have a chance to get to visit with y'all again. A few things going on today. Busy day. It's the third day of the of the new year. I got my good coffee here. Oh, this is called Bosque Ranch. Uh, Bosque Ranch, if you know, that's uh, Taylor Sheridan. That's his operation. Uh, working, um, working cattle ranch and real big in horses. He's been horses for years. But you probably know Taylor Sheridan more from um, Yellowstone and all of that stuff associated with all his TV shows and stuff. But it's a good coffee collaboration with community to be honest i don't think they're growing roast and they're doing that through community but it's good it's a it's a dark roast you've got like dark roast now that it is i guess so you can imagine it came out of a pot of hanging over a campfire somewhere with <laughs> while you're out there tending to the cattle so we live out our little fantasies like that sometimes you know well today is day three of 45 in our journey through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now I hope by now you've got a chance to get a copy of this book. I bought 500 copies. If you haven't got one from me at one of the churches, let me know. I'll get you. I'll get you one some way or another. But if you don't have the book, our readings today are in, down in the comments. You have to pull it up in there to show you exactly where we where we are. Uh, what it's doing in our 45 days, we're reading through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, combining those Gospels together, and we're reading them chronologically. That means the order that they occurred day by day by day by day. Now, I switched up a little bit yesterday cause I did, uh, from the book because it put the chronologies, or the genealogies, a little farther into the story, and I, I didn't see it that way. We started out with with day one, looking at in the beginning was the word. Okay, that's that's it. That's that's Christ. That's that's it. He was on his chronology. He was always there. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. We know that Jesus Christ is the word. It says the word incarnate is Him. Well, yes, we kind of looked at the genealogies to know. Looking back, and a question came up last night. Thank y'all for questions. Please put your questions in the comments or wherever, or send them to me like I got it yesterday. Um, but via text, it said the two genealogies look like they're different. I'm glad that you noticed that. It's because one is following the genealogy of Joseph, the adopted father of Jesus, and one is following the genealogy of Mary, the actual bloodline. So there you go. And see, you wouldn't maybe notice that before if you were um, reading it straight through, if you were reading Matthew and then going back and reading Mark, because you would have forgot, well, what did this one say? But putting them together like that and the, combine, we can see where the differences are. Now, today, we are looking specifically at a few instances that occurred before the birth of Christ. And these are the announcements of Christ. These are whenever the angel came. First of all, the angel came to Zechariah who was John the Baptist's dad. Remember that story. If you got, Hopefully you got to read in there today. And that story's going to be found in Luke chapter 1, verse 1 through 25. When the angel appeared to Zechariah when he was in the temple making sacrifices and said, you're going to have a son. Well, they were, him and his wife were old. They'd never had kids before. And he said, yeah, you will have children. So the angel appeared and told him that. Read the whole story. He was struck deaf. He couldn't talk. He was just so amazed. And then we have the announcement of the angel appearing to Mary to tell Mary that she was going to have a child. She would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would conceive the child, and that she would have a child. And then we go on and we find the we find the first of Joseph's three dreams. You know, Joseph had dreams as well. Joseph was had messages from the angels as well and that's going to be matthew chapter 1 verse 18 that's that's joseph's first three dreams remember that we'll get to his other two a little later into the story but the whole thing is that the angel appeared and had a message to zechariah and had a message to mary and had a message to joseph and the most important part of that part is the fact that they they were obedient to the message I don't know why God's telling you, God's calling on you, God's put into you. It may be a vision, a dream, an actual appearance, how it may be. I don't know. But what are you doing with that? Herein comes obedience. You know, we kind of finished up year 2023 talking about obedience. Obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. This is the first of the year. You know, this is all the New Year's resolutions. And most New Year's resolutions die by the second Friday of the year. Whatever that may be, I think, I think they, they call it quit day, I think. Maybe it's usually around January 9th or something, I think the average works out to be. 
And that's the day when all of a sudden you can get back to all the equipment you want to use at the gym because those, those new people, new memberships, they're over that. They've had enough of that. They've, they're, they're done with that. I used to see in the day that cigarette sales would go back up, alcohol sales would go back up, all those things people quit there or started as new. They're, they're, they're done with that. But I want to ask you this year, if God has put something on your heart for this year, remember our vision at churches, that the churches I have is one more in 2024, that one more person that you're going to help to lead to Christ Jesus, that you're going to share the gospel, share your testimony with. That's our dream. That's our vision for the year. What do you have? What's God given you for this year to come? Because God's given it to you. God's shown it to you. But you have to be obedient to the call. God has called you to something. I don't know what it is. I don't know I don't know exactly what it is. I know in scope what God has called me to do. God has called me to minister and God has called me to preach the gospel. He's also called you to go forward and bring forth the, the gospel to everyone, that good news. But in the, the minutia, if you will, of what that calling looks like, I continue to work through that and you will have to as well. But I want to ask you today that are you think that you're doing everything you can be to be in obedience to what God has called you to do. I put out a post yesterday. What would you do if, 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 you, if you could get over your fear? If you weren't too afraid, what would you do? What, what, what fear is keeping you from doing the thing that you know that you should do? Pray that God will be able to bring you through. You know, I've heard something this morning. Saying, you know, when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, remember it's a, it's a valley and you aren't the valley you that's not you that's not the situation you're in does not define you that is not you when going through the valley you are not the valley all right just keep going through it so whatever it is that you're working through keep working through it and have god to give you some clarity in your calling that's all right ask him those who lack wisdom he says what ask for wisdom let me pray for you this morning father god may we all do whatever we can to be obedient to our calling Lord God, all that we do is for your glory. We pray that you pour out upon us such a newness of, of a level to be obedient, such a, a newness of acceptance of what you've given to us. Lord God, give us the power and the boldness that come through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. You know God loves you. You've got to know by now that I love you. Make sure and go out there and let somebody else know that you love them as well. Y'all have a great day day.